Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing planned contrasts after a statistically significant ANOVA using SPSS. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using for this example, and I have just two variables. Treatment, and this is a categorical variable and has three levels individual, counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual. And then I have a dependent variable, depression. And it's at the scale level of measurement. And we'll assume for this example that these scores are T-scores, a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So we have participants who received a particular treatment, for example, individual counseling, and their associated scores, and we want to see if the means for each group are statistically different from another, so we'll conduct a one-way ANOVA for that, and then we want to follow up with planned contrasts to get more information about where differences may be across these groups. So first let's conduct the one-way ANOVA, and there are a few ways to conduct ANOVA and SPSS, I'm going to use the Analyze Compare Means option. So Analyze Compare Means and over to One-Way ANOVA. So from the One-Way ANOVA dialog, it's fairly straightforward to conduct the ANOVA. I'm going to move the independent variable treatment to the factor text box and the dependent variable depression to the dependent list list box. So we have our independent variable treatment our dependent variable depression. And we can see we have contrasts here in the top right, but I'm first going to conduct an ANOVA and then come back and perform the planned contrast. So the only other change I want to make at this point is under options, I want to run the homogeneity of variance test here. I'll check that off and click continue and then click OK. So we have the Levine's test here test of homogeneity of variances and we want there to be homogeneity of variance so we can continue forward with taking a look at the ANOVA results and looking at this p-value here we have that we've met the assumption of homogeneity of variance 0.589 it's a non-statistically significant result it is greater than 0 0.05 so we would say we do have homogeneity of variance and moving down to the ANOVA table, interpreting the between groups row, right, this first row, we can see that we have a p-value here of 0 0.001. So we have a statistically significant difference between groups with this ANOVA. But that doesn't tell us where the difference is. For that, we're going to use planned contrast to map out specifically differences that we are looking for. So let's take a look at the data editor and see how conceptually this would make sense for our planned contrast. So we have individual counseling and group counseling and then we have this treatment as usual group. So one thing we may want to know here in the planned contrast would be is there a difference in the means looking at individual and group together and comparing that to treatment as usual. And then the next plan contrast could be looking at the difference between individual and group. So because we only have three levels of this independent variable, three groups, the maximum number of contrasts we can have is two. The maximum number of contrast is equal to k minus 1. So we have three groups, minus 1 that gives us 2. We can only have two planned contrast. Also, we can only use a group by itself one time in the planned contrasts. So in the case of looking at individual and group together compared to treatment as usual, moving to the next planned contrast, we can't use treatment as usual. The only comparison we have left would be comparing group to 
individual. So as you can see here, there would have been two other possible paths for planned contrast. So there's the path that I selected, which is individual and group taken together and comparing those groups to the treatment as usual level of the independent variable, and then moving to individual compared to group. And then there's two other paths. We could have selected individual and treatment as usual compared to group, and then looked at individual compared to treatment as usual. And also we could have looked at group and treatment as usual, compared that to individual, and then in the second level of those plan contrasts, look at group compared to treatment as usual. So we have those three paths available if we want to run two plan contrasts with these three levels of independent variable treatment. So I chose a pair of plan contrasts that I believe makes sense given the way we have grouped these participants and what we're trying to find out about their scores and how they compare. So we have individual and group together compared to treatment as usual, and then individual compared to group. So let's take a look at how to arrange this in the plan contrast section. So we'll go to compare means, one way ANOVA, and we can leave this configured as we had it. We don't need the homogeneity of variance test anymore. Of course, we could leave it checked off, but I'll uncheck it. We don't need it for this example. And then we won't use anything here in post hoc tests. Go up to contrast. And you can see up here in this frame, we have contrast one of one. So we know the most we can have here would be two for the second value. So contrast one of two and contrast two of two. So for one of two, we want individual and group together compared to treatment as usual. So we're going to enter coefficients here that represent, that are tied to each group. And when we're done adding, the coefficients have to be equal to zero. And when we're combining groups for comparison, like we're going to combine individual and group, they have to be equally weighted. So the coefficient total at the end when I'm done planning this contrast needs to be zero. And if we combine any groups, the weight needs to be equally distributed across those groups. So one way you could do this for this example, for coefficients would be looking at individual. I'll set this coefficient at 0.5 and click add. For group, I'll do the same thing. So 0.5, add. So now I have equal weighting, 0.5 and 0.5, but my coefficient total right now is one. So for treatment as usual, I'll just go up here and add negative one. I'll click or enter negative one and click add. So our coefficient total is now at zero. And the groups that we combine, in this case two groups we combined, are equally weighted 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative one. So this is our this is our first planned contrast. Individual and group together compared with treatment as usual. So now I'm going to move on to the second contrast. And we know in this case, because of the way I've arranged the first contrast, the second one has to be a comparison between the individual counseling level of the independent variable treatment and the group counseling level of the independent variable treatment. So I'll click Next. Now we can see we have contrast two of two. And I want to compare just individual and group. So this will be one, and click Add then negative one and click add. So we have one and negative one, so we have individual and group here. We have a coefficient total of zero. However, we did not include the treatment as usual variable, and we need to include that so that this contrast will run. So in this case, for the third coefficient, the coefficient associated with the treatment as usual, I'm gonna use zero. 
So it's 1, negative 1, and 0. I have a coefficient total of 0. I'll click Continue and click OK. So here we have, of course, the ANOVA table again. And we have that same statistically significant result. We have our contrast coefficients here in the second table. So we can see we have individual and group together compared to treatment as usual. And in our second contrast, individual compared to group. And for treatment as usual, the coefficient is zero. So that is not being used in this contrast two. And then we have for this depression variable, assume equal variances and does not assume equal variances. If we go back up to the first analysis, we can see we have the Levine's test, which I reviewed before, and of course we have a non-statistically significant finding. So we do have homogeneity of variance, so we're going to assume equal variances. So we're going to be interpreting contrast 1 and 2 for this assume equal variances section. So looking at contrast 1, Let's take a look at the p-value. You can see it's 0 0.001. It's statistically significant. So this is looking at individual and group compared to treatment as usual. So there's a statistically significant difference between individual and group and treatment as usual. Looking at contrast 2, we have 0 0.073. That is not statistically significant. It is greater than 0 0.05. So we know that we do not have a statistically significant difference between individual counseling and group counseling, contrast two. So we have a difference, a statistically significant difference in contrast one, and we do not have a statistically significant difference for contrast two. I hope you found this video in performing planned contrasts after a statistically significant NOVA and SPSS to be useful. And thanks for watching.